This is a product I've recently received from Banggood and I'm actually not going to review it as it's been reviewed recently by Big Clive. So there seems very little point in doing exactly the same thing. But what I do propose to do is to modify it to make it safe. Now I've already taken this apart and normally I would um, open this on, on camera but the screws that hold it all together as you can see if it will focus are absolutely minute and they simply go into the extrusions here and I don't think they're going to take too many screwings in and out before they cross thread and uh, well lose their thread basically. Now I have to say that this thing does actually work and there's nothing sort of wrong with it as it stands but it does have this rather awful mains plug on it non-polarized and it is supplied whoops with one of these dreadful lethal adapters um, as I'm in New Zealand you get this awful thing which is very unsafe I haven't quite decided yet which ones I'm going to use. This is a rather nice one, but it's something I've removed from something else. And this is a new one, which I've bought, which is a miniature. And they're both main switches because as the product comes, it doesn't have an on off switch on it. Now, the other thing it doesn't have is a fuse. So I have bought a, a fuse holder and some one amp quick blow fuses, which are off camera. There we go to make it somewhat more safe. Now this is a plug, a moulded one as it happens, and is typical of the ones used in New Zealand. At least it is polarised, and um, but the downside is it doesn't have a fuse in the plug, unlike British plugs, which are, in my opinion, slightly biased maybe, but the best in the world, which does have a fuse. Now if you are in the UK and you're considering some of these modifications, it's debatable that a fuse is required because if you put a one amp fuse in the mains plug that will do the job nicely. Now the other reason for changing the cable quite clearly there is no earth on it and as the whole thing is metal if anything went wrong with any of the electronics inside the case is going to be potentially at mains voltage and if it's going to be used um, in a children's bedroom or well, even in anybody's bedroom for that matter you don't really want to grab hold of the metal device and electrocute yourself because it could become live without actually blowing up or anything like that it could just go to ground which means that you are the earth and obviously not a good idea so here's the back of the unit it has a potentiometer on here which adjusts the speed of the motor and here the cable goes in via at least a restraining plastic thing. I don't know what they're called, restraining gland, I think. But ironically, there's a knot inside it as well. So it looks like they wasn't quite sure whether there was going to be a knot as a restrainer or the restraining plastic thing. So they've done both. Um, the first one of which is completely useless, but never mind. So I'm going to take that out and um, put in the three core cable find a, um, I haven't instantly found a good place to earth it so I may well have to put a nut and bolt into the um, cabinet somewhere so I can get a good firm earth and of, obviously the fuse is going to sit in the back of it and it should do that without touching any of the electronics I'll have to check that to make sure but I think it's going to be okay um, and as for which switch I use, I don't know yet. Um, the lazy part of me says this is the best switch because one small hole and we're in business. And this one requires hmm, a somewhat more jiggery pokey. And I, I suspect a great deal of filing to mount that one. And that is just a snap on connection. That one looks nicer, I think. But it depends how lazy I feel at the time. Bear in mind, I've, oh, that's just a single hole fitting as well. Anyway, 
So I will go off and I'm sure you don't want to see me struggling with a file. It's a bit boring. So I will come back when I've got whatever components I want to use on the back panel and we'll see where we go from there. I've got the holes drilled now and I've mounted the fuse holder and the new three core cable. What I'm going to do now is to put an earth tag on here and I should crimp it and solder it and it will go here where the switch is going to mount the small I decided on the small switch in the end due to a bout of laziness and that will just crimp under there I should clean off the paint first of all of course to make sure it's a good earth and uh, then we'll start to wire it up right well the job's done at the moment the product the um, machine is upside down in case you're thinking I've put the fuse up the wrong way I haven't and um, off is obviously down because it's upside down so that will be on now the only thing I'm just about to check now is I've got the meter here and we're just about to check the earth connection is good right I'm connected to the earth connection on the plug and here is earth and it makes good contact and here's metal work so all seems to be good anything that's metal is earthed which is how it should be right the only thing left to do now is to switch it on Looking at it from this side, by the way, just so you can see it. Um, it's not rocket science what I've done. Um, the power cord, let's get a bit closer. The power cord comes in here and goes straight to the fuse, comes out of the fuse, and then goes on to the switch. And comes out of the switch into the little power supply. Now rather than mess with this I've made the joint of the neutral using a, a crimp here and it comes back out and goes back down to the power. Um, the other side of it I haven't touched so I've just literally unplugged it while I was putting the pot back in so it should all be perfectly good. There's not a lot of clearance between the fuse and the back of the motor, but it's about a quarter of an inch, and I don't think the mains is going to be jumping that far. So all that remains to do is to put some power on and stand back. It's working. And the potentiometer here controls the speed of the motor, as you can see. Now the only thing I would say about this product, apart from the fact it's now safe, um, is that as per typical of the Chinese producers, they lie completely about its power rating. It's supposed to be 10 watts. Now bearing in mind I guess that would also be including the motor, which is a small DC motor which uses about 35 milliamps if I can remember. I have measured this earlier but I've, I never wrote it down for some strange reason. But the whole thing consumes 3.2 watts. Now obviously that is a long way off 10 watts. So I can only put it down to the fact that they're telling us porky pies. Now considering it is a 3 watt product it does produce a very good light and if they named it as 3 watts I would be happy. But bearing in mind what this cost up on your screen now it's pretty good value for money and I've enjoyed adding another five dollars worth of parts to it to make it pretty well up to proper safety standards right here's a quick demonstration of how it looks um, it's still daylight at the moment so obviously it's um, not giving the best results and I'm hoping it's focusing on the wall let's take this out of the way I think that focuses a bit better then because it hasn't got 
So there you go, if I turn the potentiometer, that's fast, and you do hear a little bit of a whine when it's fast, but when it's running at a, what I think is a sensible speed, about there, it doesn't make a squeak.